Yeah, and that was something that I noticed in your book was I hadn't realized how much work and how much perseverance it took for you to make AOL happen. I mean, you started, like you said, in 1985. I think you were, uh, it was before it was Quantum Computing Services. Was it something else well, before we that? Started, right? We started in 1985, so we didn't have much venture capital. We were only yeah. able to raise about a million dollars of venture capital. Uh, we, we decided to partner with other companies. So we, we, we created essentially private label or white label services with Commodore and Apple and Tandy and, and IBM. And, and so it wasn't until you know, about 1990 that we really launched America Online, which became AOL as sort of our own you know, service. And so those first five years or so really was just a lot of blocking and tackling to form these partnerships and launch these services, really leveraging other people's brands, other people's distribution. And then we were able to stand on our own two feet and with uh, with uh, America Online. And when we launched that in, uh, you know, around 1990. Oh, sorry. I, I thought that you were adding a number on the end of 1990. That was the, you know, the kind of where, where we launched that as it's our own sense, independent brand. But in retrospect, the reason it took so long and that it really took a decade is it, it's time when I was you know, doing it. I was in my mid 20s at the time. So I just thought the idea was obvious that everybody would get connected. And you know, it took, it was, I was surprised that it took so long. It was such a slog. But in retrospect, it's it's easier to see because back then, most people didn't have PCs. Most of the people who had PCs didn't have modems to connect. Most of the people who had modems and PCs, you know, couldn't afford the ten dollars an hour it often cost to be connected. You know, it was a kind of a hassle and, and hard to get connected, and there wasn't much to do when you did get connected. So, you know, it just took us a, a decade to you know, to kind of make it easier to use and more useful and more fun and more affordable. So, it really was kind of ready for prime time, ready for more of a kind of mainstream, you know, kind of audience. And that was one of the lessons I learned in that in that first wave. Sometimes revolutions happen in more evolutionary ways and, and sometimes you just need, you know, perseverance to stick with it because uh, you know, it's it's it, some of the some of these challenges, some of these opportunities are hard and are going to take time and you you kind of have to keep at it. 